Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of our video newsletter. In this video I want to talk to you about the Marchman Act and the Baker Act occurring in the same case. That's right, a Marchman Act and a Baker Act occurring in the same case. So, so let me explain how that can work. There have been times where we have uh, been retained on a Marchman Act case where somebody is in a facility. So perhaps they, they had an overdose um, and went to the emergency room as a result and the uh, the doctor on on staff there, a psychiatrist, an emergency room doctor, decided that if he if he or she was to allow them to leave, they would harm themselves. In other words, they presented as as a as a as a danger to themselves or others right there and then. So they, they legally met Baker Act criteria. So in those instances, that person is going to be held under the Baker Act. And what we then do is we then go and file Part One of the Marchman Act, which is a court order for assessment and stabilization. And then what happens is that once the facility has released them, they are then taken from that facility, which is probably going to be a hospital, and they're taken over to the assessment facility. And at that point, the Marchman Act process then takes over. So the case started with the Baker Act, and then it went into Marchman Act. There have been other cases where we've, we've have filed the Marchman Act, and the Marchman Act is, is proceeding. Perhaps they're in an assessment facility. Perhaps we're into part two of the Marchman Act, and now they're in a treatment facility, and they have... Um, they have a, a, some type of break. They uh, become suicidal. Something happens to them, and the facility that they're at makes a determination that they meet criteria for a Baker Act. So we've got a March when that case that's in process, right? And now a Baker Act gets initiated. So they get taken from the facility they're at, and they get taken to another facility where they get stabilized under the Baker Act. Now, typically, and hopefully, that only lasts for a day or two, two or three days, and perhaps even four days, and then the person's return to the Marchman Act facility. So it is possible, and we have seen on several occasions, where Baker Act and Marchman Act sort of interact, okay? Um, and as I, as I tell people when they call us, you know, these cases are, are fluid. And what I mean is things change, right? I mean, we're dealing with a, with a, a horrible disease of the mind, whether it's substance use, mental illness, uh, typically together. And, and things change as, as someone goes through the recovery process. So... It can happen where it starts as a Baker Act, goes into Marchman. It can start as a Marchman Act and then go to a Baker Act. So with that said, I appreciated the question that was asked to me about, you know, the combination of the both. Um, if you have any questions about that, feel free to reach out to us. We never charge for a consult. And with that said, stay safe and be well.